Are we live? Yeah. We're oh. live. We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. And now we're live. So everyone can hear. We're live. <laughs> I must say, I must say that um, in welcoming, in welcoming everybody, those who are streaming, to this beautiful T4 setting that we have this evening, uh, that it definitely adds such a special feel to this very special occasion. And we hope, we are hoping that in sharing it with you this evening, that we will get to somehow, somehow get to share in this wonderful atmosphere that we are all feeling here at Pete's workshop um, where we are streaming live to you. So by welcoming you once again, my name is Paul Zilomo. To those of you who may not know me, but I'm sure that everyone knows who I am by now. And on behalf of the fire team, uh, those of us who are here, and I'm just going to acknowledge them quickly. Uh, Pete, who is uh, our host this evening, Dr. Steph, Agerda, Flip, and yours truly, as well as our special guests, whom you will also get an opportunity to hear from in a moment. And I'd also like to acknowledge Rita, welcome very much, and our alumnus, that's part of our fire circle and fire family that keeps on growing more and more. And on that point of growth, I think for me this evening is humbling. When I take a moment and I think back to just over a year ago when we started and I know this one quote that I often like to quote that a journey of a thousand miles begins with taking a one step and I think for me the humbling moment is in the recollection of our very humbling but very visionary beginnings that we had from the beginning and along the way to really get to celebrate milestones such as the one that we are celebrating with you here this evening. And the milestone this evening is our launch of our fire ebook, fire recipe ebook. That's it. I think that's the right word to go. Fire recipe ebook <laughs> by our one and only esteemed chef, uh, Pete. And I must say that. Even though the Fire e Recipe ebook does carry, I suppose, you know, the name of Pete, that it is most definitely a celebration of each and every one of us who continues to walk in the fire journey, who continues to embrace and to celebrate. formalities and the proceedings this evening. So this evening we're going to start off following my word of welcome. I'm going to invite Pete in a moment and um, I'm going to ask Pete to share with us a little bit more. You know there's, there's always a story that lies behind a book. So I think Pete will have a moment to tell us there a little bit about the story behind this book and I'm sure that Pete's story once again it will be a story that once again speaks to the journey that we are all embracing as part of our fire diabetes journey. And then afterwards, Pete will hand over to Rita. Uh, Pete will invite Rita to say a few words from her side. And thereafter, Pete and Steph will present everyone who is here. And I'm hoping that at that moment, perhaps maybe with the camera, we'll see with the cameramen who are working on standby whether perhaps maybe you'll be able to catch a glimpse of everybody but if not we'll definitely acknowledge everyone who is joining us here this evening and then we are going to have a treat i mean what is a book launch without actually getting an opportunity to taste one of the snack recipes from the book launch so that is exactly what Pete has in store for us later on, we are going to be watching him in action. And I don't know about you, but I know that each moment that I get to spend watching Pete in the kitchen in action actually gets me so inspired, so fired up that I actually believe that there is a chef deep inside of me that's just waiting to leap out. So we cannot wait for the trip. And without further ado, with those formalities and acknowledgements right at the beginning. Once again, let me say welcome and thank you so much to each one of you joining us live for pausing, pausing, stopping, and to take in 
this celebratory moment, this, this milestone that I would like to begin, that it is one of so many more that we have in store for you that we are still going to share together. So on that note, please allow me to welcome our esteemed chef, Pete. <laughs> and invite everyone to give Pete a word of welcome. Um, and to say to you, Pete, in, in, in welcoming you, and I suppose let me uh, first start off by asking you a few questions, if I sure. may. If you um, will indulge me, always, if you will yeah, indulge always. me. Um, and the first question to you, Pete, is that we, we, we say this is an e-book, but in actual fact, what's exciting is that, and I, I need to hold a copy, oh, if I may. Yes. What's exciting is that this is a recipe book that you actually get to hold in your, oh my gosh, that you get to hold in your hands. <laughs> and you get to see water, uh, uh, mouth-watering and appetizing photos like the ones that I'm looking at now. Um, such an inspiration to just even hold this in my hand. I can only imagine the journey that it has taken to take us this far. Just let us in a little bit, Pete, and just share with us part of the journey that has come to this point of the launch. Thanks, for being, well, it, it's, it's, it's a weird, it's a very, very weird feeling, actually, because I, I've never thought of this as a book. This has always lived in my mind as week one, week two, week three, week four. <laughs> and I kind of always, that's when I'm, I'm, when I'm planning what we're doing the following week, I go to my file and I open up week three and I look through what's happening. And, I, and I've never, it wasn't until Steph mentioned we're putting it all together and you see it in one place, in one piece that you kind of, now it feels like a book. It didn't feel like a book till I, I saw it. And it's one of those funny things and it's, it's, I've written books before and it's, they never really, come to life until you actually see and can hold them. Yeah. And then you kind of flip through it and you go, oh, I remember they doing that, oh, I remember that, oh, this. You know, when you proofread bits and pieces, you're reading a page at a time and someone says, check this recipe, is this okay? And you read through bits and pieces, but you don't kind of see it in its entirety. And that was the same with, 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 the, with the courses we put it together. We did one week and we built the, the rest of the shopping and all the bits and pieces and the tips around one week. And so they were always done in isolation and it was never like, back to back from day one to day 40, all in one kind of nifty folder. So I'm, I'm hugely, uh, I mean, this is the first time I've seen it in the flesh. Oh, wow, <laughs> wow. And it is so, so it's, exciting. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so exciting to hold it in the flesh. <laughs> it is so exciting. Um, Pete, what, what, do you, what do you hope to achieve for each and every single person that actually gets to hold this book in their hands? You know, I, for, for me, this has been one of the, the work that I've been most proud of in the last, I don't know, 10, 10 years. But because of the, uh, the reach that I've had, and I've said this a number of times on our meetings, you know, as a chef, it's, it's one thing to produce nice food and you get this great feeling of satisfaction when you see clean plates coming back from the restaurant. <laughs> you get good reviews and bits and pieces. But I've never been involved in anything that's changed people's lives. And, and that for me is, is a better use of my talents in all the years I've been in the kitchen, in the kitchen 35 years cooking for everything. To actually put some pen to paper and have people, the quality of their lives improve by following what we've been doing. That for me is an immense source of pride. And, and, and this book is a culmination of that year's how long is it? A year and a year and a half's yeah, work, half. just about. And, and so for me, I have a, a this has a very special place in my heart. This little oh. folder, and I hope everyone who gets a hold of it gets to to, to 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 deal with it, use it in their lives. And again, it's it's an inspiration to to work on your own bits and pieces. Rita will tell you she's written how many books now? Three, two books. They're a platform. They're a platform. You take the recipe and you go, okay, cool. I know what I can do. I can add a little bit of this to that, and I can add some chili, or I can leave out the coriander. And all of a sudden, this recipe book grows into your own folder. And that, for me, is, is, is that would be the inspiration. If people took this and were inspired to then produce their own recipes and stick to the journey that we've, that we've you know, I'm, I'm assuming at some stage down the line that it will fall into the hands of people who don't, have not actually done the 40 days. Um, and when they read this, they'll realize they need to sign up for the 40 days because the 40 days is not just about this. Yeah. It's not just about 
the recipes, because otherwise we can just have an app, sign up for the app, we'll send you the recipes, and you can get on with yourself. You know, I think this is just part of the journey, it's part of the holistic approach that we do. And so I think this needs, this can't be seen in, in isolation, as much as I would love it if you've seen it in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of a, of, a, of, the, of a holistic program, it's just one part of, of, and it's one contribution to all the stuff that the rest of you do. Uh, Pete, thank you so much. Tell you what, tell you what, I think before I let you go, uh, for those who are joining us, who are streaming live, just to whop their appetite a little bit more, just ever so subtly. Okay, so... Um, talk us through some of your favorites. Um. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do tonight, mm -hmm. what I'm going to demonstrate tonight. And it, it, it bears out from the conversation we had last week about how to handle the festive season, to put a positive spin on it, not to be alarmed and to worry that you're going to have to go off the wagon. So I thought what we'd do this evening by way of demonstration is some of the snacks out of the book. Oh, Just fantastic. to show you how easy they are to whip up a table full of snacks that are all green listed that you can either make for yourself if you're traveling or make for friends and family over the festive season that everyone will have tons of tasty food without having to open bags of chips and buy horrible dips and eat starchy mince pies. There is a whole list of things that you can do over the festive season and we'll demonstrate three or four of those this evening just to, for you to get, get you in the mood. Oh, that's definitely something to look forward to. A demonstration of those green listed snacks. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank present. you so, so much. I'm going to go jump into mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. I, for one, cannot wait. Um, we're going to get there in a moment for the demo of those scrum trust, Grain Lister trust uh, snacks. I think the one thing for me that I love about the Grain Green Listed, I almost said Grand, but it's a Grand Green Listed snacks. I think that also rolls off the tongue quite nicely. I think the one thing that I love about me is the guilt free snacking. I think it, it really feels like if anyone can relate, you know, when, 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 you, when you run five kilometers and just as you're about to finish the first kilometer, you feel like you are finished, but you keep going and you just keep going. And when you get to five kilometers, it's like the best feeling ever. Now, if that thought does not excite you, try snacking on a green listed snack. It comes pretty close. <laughs> it comes pretty, pretty close. So with that being said, we do have also one of our biggest supporters on the fire journey, Rita. Uh, she does feature also on the Fire Diabetes in 40 Days, our program uh, that we run online. And she's joining us here this evening. And I would like to invite her at this point in time to say a few words from her side. Over to you, Rita. Really I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me stand here next to you because yeah, I'm I mean, actually, I've got the mic. I've got so I've got I can stand mic. here next to you and smile. <laughs> <laughs> I, firstly, I just wanna thank you very much for inviting me this evening. And um, secondly, I just wanna congratulate Pete I know what a mammoth task this is to put together a recipe book and to try out all the recipes and to make sure that they are compliant with our lifestyle because um, normally as chefs you, you just take a little bit of this and you take a little bit of that and then you've got to think, whoa, wait, that's treff, you can't actually put that in the food. So you've got to be very, very careful and make sure. So it's, it's quite challenging just to make a recipe book that that is compliant with our lifestyle and i know i looked through the recipes pete there are some there are some there that look absolutely fantastic i haven't tried any of these recipes yet but i sure will be trying them very very soon then i want to tell you the thing steph as well for inviting me and and just congratulate you on this program that you've started that has changed people's life exponentially and made such a difference such a difference and between you and Pete you're basically saving lives that's what you're doing and I think that you deserve a round of applause for that to find that niche in the market where you know 
type 2 diabetes is, is, is a worldwide pandemic. We talk about COVID and we know that that's a pandemic, but we know that type 2 diabetes is also a worldwide pandemic. And unless we start reversing that, we're going to see more deaths than you're going to see with COVID. And again, Pete, you know, that you've... I mean, how many recipes are in here? Um, oh, I don't know. Close. <laughs> I don't know exactly how many. Plenty. A lot. Plenty. 80, 80, 80, 80 recipes. Yeah. That's a lot of recipes. So I would advise everybody just go out and get this. There is something for everybody. Where if you don't like Brussels sprouts, there's another recipe that you can do. Do not just have to eat Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brussels sprouts, thank you. thankfully. So, but there's something for everybody in this book. There's, there, there are desserts, there are starters, there are main meal. And Even pretty meal easy. I'm, I'm impressed by these recipes because they're quite easy to make. You know, a lot of people, they get very sort of intimidated by the thought of having to cook. But these are really, really easy. So congratulations again, Pete. And congratulations again, Steph. And, and you too. Congratulations to you <laughs> as well, Pumzili. And again, thank you very much for this honor. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. So well spoken from the heart, Dai. And we value uh, your support and you journey with us as well. Thank you so much. And now we come to the presentation of the copy of the book by um, our host and educator on the journey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tonight I'm just Dr. chef assistant. I'm just chef assistant. I'm being downgraded. Terribly. Uh, I'll, I'll have it again, I think. Must I get the mic or is it the right to Mozilla? It's not Mozilla. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to. Okay. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Now you connected. You've got to stay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Pumzile. Um, while Rita was talking, I was thinking about four years ago when I walked into my physician friend's office and I was had this tight chest couldn't breathe and I was thinking I was having a heart attack and he examined me and he told me oh don't worry <coughs> um, you you have diabetes hypercholesterolemia you're about 25 kilograms, 20, 25 kilograms overweight. You have hypertension. Um, I'll put you on these scripts. I think you must go and see the endocrinologist next door, um, the biokinetheist, and you must go back to your psychiatrist because you have anxiety. But I'm giving you the script in the meantime. And I thought, oh my goodness. This is what I've been doing for the past, at that stage, 25 years. And I know the road. I know, I know where this is going. Every year they're just going to up my script and up my script and up my script. They must, somewhere we must be missing it. And I'm not sure if you're watching Frank, but that, that evening I, I phoned my good Frank, f friend Frank. Uh, Frank is, is a pharmacologist, but he knows his physiology very well. And he... For years he's been telling me, Steph, watch it, you're getting insulin resistant, you're getting insulin resistant. Well, shucks, I did get it. And, but he used to say one thing. He said, you know, for the first two years of medicine, that's in the time when we still have uh, pre cynical and then cynical medicine, or pre-clinical and clinical medicine. Um, and we had an in anatomy and physiology in our first two years and and you study physiology for a whole year in enormous detail and then you move on third year to pathology and other stuff and you forget about physiology and he started to explain the physiology to me again and I and he said Steph this is how you can reverse your insulin resistance remember second year never mind fifth year because that's only drugs 
you forget about the other stuff that you must do to improve your physiology. We, do, we are just taught how to, how to reverse or stop the pathology. <laughs> and, and that's how I started on, on this journey and reversed my insulin resistance, all my stuff, um, lost 20 kilograms um, for the first time in 20 years. I'm, I was off after a year and a half on this journey of all my antidepressants and bipolar medication and stuff. And somehow patients started to come and we just realized we need to, to you know, for me to reverse one patient takes 17 hours of my time over a period of a year. There must be a better way to do it. I don't have to draw the same picture for 45 minutes for every patient. Why can't we be cleverer? Why can't we make this fun? It, must, it mustn't be a medical thing. Anybody can do this. And that's, I remember it was in the, in the lockdown, the beginning of the lockdown, I, I phoned Pete and said, Pete, can't, can't we do something? You are closed. Um, I'm sitting there waiting for somebody to get anything but COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and and we've, uh, Flip was instrumental in helping putting us together and Frank and um, Pumzile, George is not here today. And yeah, we have about 250 people who've been on this journey over the past 18 months. Um, and we've learned an enormous lot. Two things that I've learned was the importance of mental health. Uh, well, that's why you got George on, involved in the first place. But I will say, if you want to reverse insulin resistance, most of it is up here, and this, the, the field, I can do it, I won't fail, because it's, it's easy to stick to this if it's not for, for, for your mind. And the other one is support, what George called the uppers and not the downers, people that are supporting you. People who've, who've completed this journey successfully and you know, are still on the track, they have supporters like Yaku. The, you know, the whole family is in it. They're supporting one another. And that's just amazing. The same in my family. So, yes, um, thanks, Pete, for, for your inspiration. That's making it fun for a lot of us. People enjoy the kitchens again. They now see food as medicine, not a, and fun, and bringing that back. And thank you so much for for being being that pal. I know it's been a tough year for you too, very tough. We love you, Pete. We love you. And <laughs> and 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 the other day I, I saw this thing of, of a program I think it's in Arizona a medical school where they have a culinary division in their medical school and I was thinking aha I know who will be our first professor in that division that's Professor Goffwood okay <laughs> and probably the head of the report will Professor Rachel <laughs> okay we will we'll still try to get the dean but I know where he is anyway so so it's, it's for me a, a wonderful privilege tonight to, we have a few hard copies. Um, those, those of you sharing online, you, at, at this stage, there'll be an email in your inbox uh, where you can download the, the ebook. Just go and check your email. It's there already. Okay. If it's not there, then it's MailChimp's fault. Um, <laughs> or Elena got struck in the traffic and she didn't press the button. <laughs> Um, but it's a privilege for me tonight to, um, with Pete, just to, to hand a few of you copies. Gerda, this is your hard copy. Gerda, was, you are not our first alumni. And this is, I'm the first one to get it. You're the first one to get it. <laughs> but, but I mean, this is the most expensive recipe book because you, yes. you, fly, you flew down from Porch to receive this. So this is... This, this is an expensive <laughs> recipe book, okay. Gerda? No, but also, be, I, just wanted to, sorry, I just wanted to say something. Um, this, this book didn't happen on its own. 
Um, I sent just hundreds of emails with recipes and bits and pieces. This book was put together and proofread and by Helena and Kathy. So they have as much responsibility for producing this beautiful thing as I do. I just gave them the content. They did all the hard work. Mm. So, oh, yeah. well done. And, and, Anzel, and Anzel, who took this from Word, and I know she has something against Bill Gates and Word. Okay. So, so, so that was a huge sacrifice for her to, to actually yeah. take something from Word to put it into Canva to, to develop this. Okay. So, Gerda, thanks for everything you, you did over the past year, your involvement, and uh, getting more and more involved. That's fantastic. Then, Lionel. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything, for your support, uh, encouragement. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also for the most difficult job, um, I think, to be in, in, in a position of, of, of leading, uh, leading change is, is difficult and challenging, especially in these days. Rita. You got one already. I've like given you yours. Okay. Flip, 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 flip. I was special. You gave mine first. Yeah, yeah. Flip, um, flip is our data analyst, our business analyst, the wise man that's always saying, "Do this this way," helping us to find new funding. But his fire diabetes title is that he's the kombucha master. <laughs> and, and we will do some kombucha tasting also tonight to see if that goes with your Benet sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Flip, thank you so much okay. uh, for okay. all your hard work and behind the scenes, that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. It's good to be in the program. Thank okay. you. Jan. Jan, Jan can't wait to get out of the blocks, I assume, Jan. <laughs> so, so, Jan, thanks. Jan is our chief technical officer. He's one of the best coders in South Africa, they tell me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, please pray for us for funding, because the moment we get funding, we can get you loose to do yeah, them. I've got to work hard. You've got to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> the moment we get funding, we will, we will we have the technology to change the world. So, Jan, in the meantime, keep yourself busy in the kitchen, please. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Cool. Yaku. Yaku is not one for cameras. No, but, 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 but Yaku is the one behind the scenes on WhatsApp, always with the most amazing humor, the encouragement, um, Yaku, Yaku when, when, when there's a WhatsApp from you, everybody reads it. Okay? I, I, can see, I can see who's reading it. Yaku. And everybody's laughing and they, okay? When I freaking post something, nobody reads it. It's Steph again, okay? Yeah, I just an educator on this journey. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, Pumzile. You didn't receive your copy here. Yeah, you must come in. Okay. So, Pumzile, thank you so much for, for everything. And David, tell her I'm Mike from your phone. Thank you so much. Can I also just say that it continues to be such an honor and a privilege, really, to be a part of your vision that also comes back to inspire me, honestly, to stop at nothing, to also make just my contribution if it means that it makes the world a better place. So yeah, thank you for that. Thanks, 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 <laughs> thanks. David, you never see David, okay? Because David is always behind the camera, but everything you've seen on the journey, every video that's being edited, all the sound clips, that's David working behind the scenes. And he got engaged this year. Okay. So, you know, since you got engaged, there's a six pack and these muscles. Are you preparing for something? <laughs> so, David, uh, yeah, for you and Christy. Wish you a wonderful future.
and some great recipes. Okay, so, so now you have to get into the kitchen. You can't leave it to her alone, you know? Okay, okay. Good, so Pete, what's next? So next, I think, Steph, we um, get stuck in feed these lovely people who amassed and, and joined us this evening. And we'll do a little demo with some snacks, and then everyone will have a little taster, and we'll have ourselves a little dinner and okay. a proper celebration. Good. So you at home, get yourself a glass of red wine. Those of you who are sitting here, fill up. You can lean over the counter. I'll be the slave, and oof, I'll be the kitchen slave, and Pete will be the, the, the chef. chef. Uh, the shoe yeah. chef. Is that, is, that, is, is, is that the word? Yeah. yeah. It's not the sous chef, it's the sous chef. The sous chef. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not sure yet. We're not sure yet. If, uh, we're not sure yet if, if Steph has risen to sous chef heights yet. <laughs> He'll begin his hunt longer and we'll take it from there. <laughs> Ik heb een beetje om nou. Oké, okay, pizza, wat are we doing? Oké. Okay. Wat are we preparing? We're going to do our little peanut butter bowl first. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do the chicken. The Brussels sprouts, and then we'll do the uh, mackerel, smoked mackerel pate afterwards. Because that's, while those are in the oven, we'll do that, and then yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. start on that, and this we'll have after dinner. Okay. So this is a peanut butter, so it's pure peanut butter. Unsalted, unseasoned, no sugar. No soya sauce, type Horrible. of cheap stuff. No. Thing. Okay. Cream cheese, cocoa powder, coconut. Okay. Hmm? Ja, je kan voor mij een beetje mijn glas dan, mijn glas dan aan ergens, ja. Please. Oké, okay, David, are okay. you ready? Can we go? Dat is ons op, oké. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. We're just waiting for Steph to bring his glass of wine. Jelle kan kom Louris, jelle wil kom in Louris hoor. Okay, Steph, are we ready? Yes, we are ready. Okay, so what we're gonna we got we got four. It's the longest, so because we need to put it in the freezer to firm up. Okay. This is just our kind of uh, our peanut butter bomb. So this is, we've got peanut butter here. This is um, unsweetened uh, and no salt or sugar peanut butter. We have some cocoa powder, we have some full fat cream cheese and we have a coconut, coconut. And we're just gonna literally put the- So what is full, free, cre full fat cream, this is just, okay, plain full fat cream cheese, is, yeah. is that, okay, yeah? Is that. I mean, this is the-, the How much, how much peanut butter? Uh, it's about, I think it's half a cup. Half a cup. This is about, just over 200 grams. Then we've got our quarter of a cup. Oops. Quarter of a cup, um, what do you call that? Uh, coconut, coconut, coconut oil. Coconut, oh yeah. and, then, and then we have... About a quarter of a cup of... of cocoa powder. Cocoa powder. Yeah. And then no more? No more. It's, no it's more. a more, it's a darker, it's more... Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's just, okay, should have left the coconut butter out. Or coconut. And what I've got here is just a little bit of... of cocoa, just to roll the... So all okay. we're doing is... Whipping these up together. Now, if, you, if you don't think have a thing like this, you can use that business machine key thing yeah, also. Yeah. Could, uh, if, so, so under normal circumstances, you could also do it by hand with a, a hand blender or something. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, and then what you would do is, I, 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 I weighed all this out earlier, but it's very hot in the kitchen, so I didn't want to leave it out because it will have melted. Yeah, yeah. And it's a little colder than I would have liked. Um, so we're just beating this until we break down the coconut oil. Oh. But you can do it with a hand mixer. You can actually do it, if your ingredients are room temperature, you can actually do it with a whisk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let's just scrape the sides of the bowl here. 
Now the thing with this is, it's quite rich. You could you could melt a little bit of uh, a bitter chocolate into this as well. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, if if you really fancy a little sweeter, this is quite bitter, but it's very very rich. You could also add maybe uh, a, a tablespoon of xylitol to this. Okay. Just to uh, sweeten it up a yeah, tad. Yeah. And how about a bit of, if you want, if you, need, if you like spicy, a bit of paprika, will, will that will I'd be in, smoke paprika yeah, or something? I'd be inclined to maybe chili? a little bit of fresh chili in this. Fresh chili. Yeah, fresh chili in this would work really, really nicely. Yeah, yeah. If you like that kind of a... Well, without the pips. I, I, I kind of think if, if you're going to put chili into something that means you like heat, so I leave the pips in. Okay. Yeah. So let's just... You put some extra salt in here. No, I haven't actually. Um, I kind of because like sometimes if you don't want to put xylitol in, there's salt sort of well, this is add to the, that salty. Yeah, you know. this is this is. I mean, the, the cream cheese is, is is seasoned enough. Yeah, yeah. And, and oh, this yeah. is it's quite bitter. Let's have a little taste of this to see. Mm. It's nice, huh? Mmm. Mm. I know you will. You will. <laughs> Eventually. So, so the thing to do is we just roll a little ball like this. But you can do that. Hey? Yeah. Now there we go. And then we just we roll it on a. So I'm going to. Have you done it? You done it quite well now. Yeah. Yeah. Rolls, people. I'm going to I'm going to carry on with other stuff while you do this. Me. Yes. This is. But I. This is the assistant. <laughs> okay. So just uh, just a little yeah. And you must do it quickly because what you don't want is it to start to melt in your hand. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, just roll it like this. And just, 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 no, just throw it, just throw it on there. It'll roll okay, on its own. Okay, roll on its own. Okay. Yeah. If you're not going to serve them immediately, keep them in the freezer with yeah. the coconut oil. Yeah. So this is this is one of the reasons we're making this first because it needs to be cold, otherwise it becomes yeah. all sticky. So yeah. we'll put this in the freezer for about 20 minutes and let them firm up. And if you're going to serve them as well for a dinner party or mm. something as truffles, then you can yeah. just keep them in the freezer. Yeah, so that's why we're doing this first, so that we can, um, yeah. we can cool put them, them away and cool them down. And we'll have them a little bit later when we've finished everything else. They taste a bit like Reese's chocolate cups. Mm. Oh. They're delicious. It's, I've actually just tasted some chocolate recently um, that Truth Coffee are making. They're making their own chocolate and there's no sugar in it whatsoever. And it has the most amazing, rich, creamy mouthfeel. Yeah. And it's it's not bitter, but it's just, oh, it's this lusciousness of chocolate without mm. the sweetness. Mm. And it's really quite special. I'm doing a, a thing next week with it. Um, and I'm, I'm doing it with, I'm making, um, I'm using it in a, like a Mexican mole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, like a, a rich, bitter Ooh. sauce that's going with quail. But but if, if, if Liz, Liz Block, you must be watching on the YouTube channel. So Liz shared a... Also, a similar recipe, she actually gave us some stuff. Liz, that was also okay. amazing. You've also used some, some chocolate and coconut. But she put some chili in there. The secret, Steph, is to try and get them all the same size. <laughs> <laughs> Just a small thing. <laughs> Pete. Uniformity. Yeah. Pete, but you know what? We don't want people fighting over these later <laughs> because someone only gets a small one and someone gets the big one. Yeah, but, but Pete, now talk, talking about that, you know, um, I was naughty the other day in a clinic. I, when I was bored, there was no patient. So there were, the, you know, there's always these, um, in the clinic, there's the, 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 the tissue boxes. Yeah. And they have little sleeping bags for Mopani worms in there. Okay. Uh, and... <clears throat> no idea what you're talking about, yes. <laughs> so, so, I, 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 I took stickers in the clinic, you know, the patient stickers, and I put on, yeah. the, on the boxes, small, large, okay. medium, extra large. You know, it was at the railway, I can't name the company, sorry. And, can I do this? Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know, this is, this is just, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I, th I thought, you know, it's yeah. just men working there, the extra large box will vanish first. But actually, <laughs> when I got there a week later, the small one <laughs> was... Oh, really? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then the small one is not that bad. Yeah. Let's put that into the freezer. Freezer's over there. Freezer over there. Yeah. I'm just going to disappear off camera for a second and put this away and wash my hands. Okay. <laughs> now, 
Now you could also, you could do a variation of these. You could, um, you could use, um, there we go. You could use like some uh, nibbed almonds, something like that. So oh, yeah, yeah, when yeah. we rolled that in the cocoa, you could take some of those little nibbed almonds oh, and yeah. roll the nibbed almonds. That's really nice, yeah, yeah. So there, there are, you can do variations of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's our first snack. That's in the, so I think the one that's gonna probably take the most PT we'll get you on because you're gonna be, well, let's, let's, okay, so. The next one we've got is our, our Brussels sprouts. Mm. Now this is, sorry, there's some bacon in here. Um, okay. So everybody, Brussels sprouts, you either love them or you hate them. And all those people who hate them, hate them because they were boiled to death by their mom or their gran or a oh, family that member. Pop, that pop, but that stuff. Oh. Oh. And in the moment you walk in the house, you know that someone has been, um, uh, where's my grated parmesan? I'll get it. Where, you know that someone has been boiling, boiling um, sprouts to death. Well, we're going to do a nice crunchy version thereof. So what I've got here is some Brussels sprouts. I'm just going to give a nice hefty dose of olive oil. So it's fresh Brussels sprouts, eh? No. Yeah, just no. raw Brussels sprouts, yeah. no pre-cooking, nothing. We're going to season these with some salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. I think maybe a little bit more oil. And then we're going to toss these in some parmesan, some grated parmesan, and a little bit of dried uh, oregano. A little bit of dried oregano. Yeah. Can you use fresh, Pete? You could use fresh, yeah. yeah. It's just the dried one has a tendency to stick a little bit yeah. better. Okay. Some dried oregano. And then lots of grated parmesan. And so, I think we're going to need more olive oil because we want, we want all the seasoning to, to stick, stick. To stick. Okay. All perfect. You know, that's, that should do the trick. Let's get all of that. It's a cup of parmesan there. And now, now what we do, now is where the magic comes in. And they're all the same size, eh? Pretty much. <laughs> so now we, so I've taken, I've got some streaky bacon here and I've cut each rasher in half. And now we just take a little bit of our Brussels sprout with our, and we just roll it up. There we go. Oh, they're going to go crispy. Mm-hmm. So, there we go. Let's... Is that, is that my job? Because well, I, let's, go, let's, I go off the scene and yeah, do this. Yeah, well, you go and do that so long. I'll give you, I'll, I'll, let me give you a starter. Okay. But we need to disappear because otherwise, otherwise people are going to tune out of all they do is watch us roll these for an hour. Yeah, 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 which is not fun, hey? No. No, no, no. So That's, the whole idea is where the bacon joins, yeah. that goes underneath. That goes underneath. Yeah, so okay. that way, that way you, it'll, it won't unravel. Oh. If you're worried about it unraveling, you could always just put a toothpick through it. We don't want to pack them too close together. You remember is Ilze Latachan with her with her yeah. uh, with her recipe. Oh yes. Ilze, if you're watching, perhaps you can share that um, broccoli ah oh, what is this Brussels sprout Brussels. recipe again yeah. on the YouTube channel. All the Ilze. Bake with, the, with the bake, with the cream. Oh, oh that yeah. is also an amazing recipe, eh? Yeah. So Ilze, please share that on this YouTube channel. Just paste it there where where you Where's the camera? Were you commenting? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going. You well, I'm going to get a couple of. I'm going to give you. What we do, Steph? I'll okay. give you another tray. Okay. To carry on with, I'll put these in the um, in the in the oven so long, mm -hmm. so that we can actually have a look and see what they look like. Because I, I I know you're going to take a while. Um, Sure yeah, you know, you know, nice. Pete. I've been, I've been taught by, by, a, by a chef from Kitchen Cowboys, Pete something. And yeah. Um, so if I'm slow, it's because I have a bad teacher, you know. Okay. Yeah, That'll yeah. be it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it back at you. Yes. <laughs> Put more space between them. More space. More space. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Come, Rita. Come help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, more. Okay, there we go. Let's move those over there. So we can continue with those. Right, I'm gonna, I got a nice hot oven, about 200 degrees, and I'm gonna pop those in. Mm -hmm. And those are just gonna crisp up. Not Those are going to crisp up nicely. Not, not grilled though. Just Sorry? Not grilled. No, no, we just roast them in a nice hot oven. So 200 degrees. 200 degrees. So, so far along? Uh, probably 20 minutes. Okay. You know, what we want is we don't want those horrible soft fillet to Brussels sprout. We want a nice bit of crunch. If you think of like a coleslaw, that's when cabbage is at its best, when it's still a little bit crunchy. We want a bit of crunch. And we basically, by the time the, the bacon is nice and golden brown and crisp, the Brussels sprout will be sufficient. Cheap and then break it up into your. So now we've got two eggs into this, which will just help to bind these. How much chicken was that? This is a, this is a kilo. A kilo. A kilo of mince, and I've got some smoked paprika here. Now this is the these little kind of little patties we're going to fashion here. This is where your imagination can run wild. You know, you could put chilies into this, you could chop olives into this, you could do sun dried tomatoes. Oh, sun dried tomatoes. You could, you could put capers in here, you could put any manner of herbs. The, 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 the sort of, the flavorings you can put in this is, is really up to your own imagination. So we want lots of seasoning, salt and pepper. Something done. Salt and pepper. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Tabasco in this as well. Because it, it just, it's chicken is crying out for a little bit of heat. Put this in the oven? Uh, yeah, let's pop that in the oven. So now I'm using this, um, this is the Chipotle um, Tabasco, which is the smoked, the smoked jalapeno one. It just, the richness to it is nice. It's not as hot as the, as the regular one, but it's got a nice smokiness to it. Mm. I tasted a new one the other day. If you like heat, it's the scorpion chili. Mm. Ooh. It, just beware, it is hot. I it is it. real hot. Scorpion. Scorpion, maybe scorpion chili. So now we're just going to mix this all in together. The, the, the egg is basically just as a binding agent more than anything else. I mean, you could do a Greek version of this with um, with some crumbled feta, chopped olives, a little oregano, lemon, lemon, mm. you got a nice lemon rind, some lemon yeah. zest. You know, it really is preserved lemon. Preserved lemon. Mm. You could do a Moroccan version. Oh yeah, preserved lemon. lemon you can smoke. go with the salt with the preserved lemon. Yeah. <laughs> in the recipe book, they, we do have a preserved yeah. lemon recipe. Yeah. 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 We do indeed. No, this it's my favorite. Have you ever tried making <laughs> preserved <laughs> lemon and you forget about the salt? Oh, it's so <laughs> salty. Yeah. You drooling. You want to do that? Yeah. Like everything that's going into it's a love language for 
Okay, so let's just have a little taste. It's always good to taste, your food to taste well. it raw yeah. because it's, it's, you don't want to put loads and loads of salt on it afterwards. Yeah. You don't want it to be bland and sometimes you need that seasoning just to bring out the rest of the flavors. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to make a slight departure from the recipe in the book. And that's just because I've got a whole container of fresh coriander that I happen to have left over from a, from a briar I did on the weekend. And it seems a shame to waste it. <laughs> so I'm just going to roughly chop this and put that through the chicken mix. There we go. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, again, you could, you could. The variation of this recipe is to load up lots of fresh ginger, chili. You could, you could make it a, a kind of a nice Thai version of this. Yeah. Lime juice, a bit of fish sauce. Yeah. You really could, you know. As I say it's, it's the chicken mince is such a blank canvas. Yeah. And you really can turn it into whatever you fancy. This is more of a sort of Mexican kind of vibe now. Now I'm just going to serve this with a little bit of mayo, but you could serve this with a lovely guacamole, that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So. We're talking about fish sauce. Mm -hmm. You yeah. remember that, that first version of, of week one? You have that Thai, uh, the Thai okay. fish soup. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So there was a there was a printing problem. Uh, okay. Yeah. So so it's supposed to be fifteen or ten mils of fish sauce. Okay. But it was hundred mils. Ooh. There's one zero too much. Oh, that's a bit salty. Okay. Yeah. So so flip. Made that with 100 mils of fish sauce. And he said it was the best recipe. <laughs> there you go. And then well, I tasted that and I thought, no, he, I can't eat this. What's wrong? You know, I don't think I'm just going to be. You know, there's something wrong. What's the wrong? The zero of the fish sauce. Unfortunately, that's, that's why proofreading and recipe testing is so important because it's happened to me before. The first cookbook I did, Kitchen Cowboys, there's still a mistake in there. Real, like which uh, one? On creme brulee. Yeah, there's, an, there's another one. <laughs> the thing, the thing with the mustard seeds in that, in that uh, the flat bread, there's too much water. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a, there's a zero too much there. Anyway. Um, so, so it's actually, I, I didn't realize, someone pointed it out to me, um, the brulee, you won't be making the brulee on fire, Dubby, it's far too much sugar. But the thing was, he phoned me up and said, Pete, he said, I've made these three times and they're not working. I, he said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Said, yeah. <laughs> I've made it for two dinner parties. It's inedible. It's terrible. It never sits. And I'm, he said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I said, well, you, I said I've read the recipe. I followed the recipe. I, I've checked it again and again. So let me have a look at the recipe. Aha. So it was one of those recipes, like a lot of recipes I've got, are, are recipes for kitchens. And so you make five kilos or something. Yeah. You never make it for four people or for six people. When you scale it down to put it into a book, you scale it down to serve six. And what you're always going to be careful of is that you that you do the proper division. Mm. And so I'd gone from a five liter mix of brulee to like a, a, a 750 mix, and I hadn't divided the sugar. Oh. Uh. So it still had. It, it's. I mean, it would. It was never ever going to. I mean, it's lovely tasting custard. It will never ever set because it had that much. And I actually had to. I actually had to, to admit it at a wedding for 300 people because um, b because he cooked this for the bride and groom and it, it failed twice. Okay. And I had to go and from this massive wedding with these people and explain why my mate Pete's brulee had not set. It wasn't his fault, it was my doing. <laughs> and my wedding present then was I had to cook dinner for them and everyone yeah, else yeah, yeah. and have the brulee done yeah. properly. So, okay. yes. so it can happen. So now, what we're going to do. So there's two ways of doing these. We're so what is this again? This is our chicken, our chicken um, and bacon bombs. So we're going to just work into these little patties. They, you can fry these in a pan, but when you're doing them on mass like we are, it's actually quite easy just to just to do little 
Patties. Little, little patties on a tray. Okay? Nice shiny, then you have to do it. Yeah. Again, consistency of size. Are we trying to same sort of size? Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I try? Just yeah. So, okay, what the best thing to do is do this with your hand. Get a little bit of olive oil in your hands. Always lubricant on your yeah. hands. That's important. Always, huh? Always, huh? You can get a far more done with lubricant than you can imagine. <laughs> when it comes to rolling out. Roll it. <laughs> you yeah. can probably get a fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's one belly laugh a day. Eh? No, this is it. It's all yeah, about. Where's George? It's one, the one belly George laugh. Will George, George will approve. George will approve. George, if you're watching, mm -hmm. tell me. So now, one, then, one belly laugh plus tonight. Okay, good. You. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so, as, as you can see, it, we literally. Okay, I mean, obviously, with a lot of cooking, the weighing out of the ingredients takes takes a while. That's not that bad, and, Pete. And having Igor as an assistant doesn't help. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, uh, as yeah, I say, myself we've, built, uh, we've literally hard. done these from scratch in, in, the, in the 20 minutes or so that we've been cooking. It took maybe half an hour to weigh out all the ingredients. And as Bumzili says, if you eat all of these, it's a meal in itself. But I mean, we're putting together a nice little snack table for, for, for a festive lunch, yeah. where, where normally this would have been uh, pastries and sugar-based things and, and wraps and all the kind of bits and pieces that we don't want anymore. And here is everything that we've had this evening, or doing this evening, is green listed. And yeah, that's it. And it's the kind of thing, yeah, exactly. I mean, e even your disabled yes, even people my, can help yeah, you. <laughs> even my challenged sous chef can do it. But as, as I said, but Flip is right. This is the kind of thing that you could make the mix and then get everyone involved, the kids, everyone rolling, making shapes, whatever. Okay, I'm going to put these in the oven and uh, we'll get another board that you can crack on with this. You want to grab another able bodied assistant? You can do that. Uh, able bodied assistant. Flip, 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 flip. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to give these a, a final flip little, little, little season. You need some olive oil on here. Do you have a clean hand or not? There we go. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's a flavor enhancer and it's always important to get the salt on first so the salt cooks onto the ingredient and brings out the flavor rather than yeah. lambasting with salt yeah, afterwards. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, this is looking rather tasty again, actually. So you also put that in at 200 degrees, Pete? Yeah. So our first batch <laughs> Oh. Of, sprouts. of sprouts are almost are just about done. If you can see that, look at this nice crispy bit of bacon. We probably need a. Um, see that caramelized as well. Yeah. So, so now that you get nice crusty cabbage, I'm going to leave these in for a little bit longer. But the bacon's crisping up nicely. Do you turn it around or not? Do you just loosen it? No, I just loosened it. I won't bother turning it over because because that where the bacon joins, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. we don't want it to unravel. We'll just get a little bit more crispiness on there. But that's looking tasty ass. Yeah, no, that's looking very lovely. Okay.
Right, so now we've got all our bits and bits and pieces in the oven. Let's, Steph, if you can just move all this over. Okay, so that's three of our bits and pieces. Right? So now the last one we're going to do. So the, the last one we're going to do is our smoked fish pate. Now, <laughs> smoked fish pate. Yeah. Peppered mackerel. Pepper, so, so I've got I've used peppered mackerel. You can use smoked snook for this. You can also use the hot smoked trout or salmon. So I've just got I've bought this. This is this is available in all supermarkets, and this is a re, this is one of my favourites. This is, just goes. So it's smoked mackerel. Smoked mackerel. Yeah. As I say, you can, can use. You buy it smoked. You buy it smoked. Okay. You can buy a uh, smoked snook. Yeah. Um, you can I also. You can buy um, those pieces of smoked uh, salmon or smoked salmon trout. Yeah. They're actually yeah, yeah. cold smoke, not the not the, the cold smoke one. So into this we've got. So here we've got now cream cheese. <laughs> I've left this out a little bit so it's nice and soft, although I've kept the fish in the fridge for those reasons. And then we've got some soft butter in here. It's half a block of butter, right? Well, this is about, this yeah. is about, it's, um, it's 200, 200, and 200 butter, 200 cream cheese, and 450 fish. Fish. And now we get some seasoning in here. I mean, it, it, this is so easy, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And now, I've, I've got some little cucumber, obviously, because we're, we're keeping it greenless. I've got some little cucumber sticks here that we can, or little crudite that we can use to dip into it. You can also use the seed crackers, which are, which are... Greenless. 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 The low carb, the low carb. The carb clever stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gigi Bakery or yeah. well, this is low carb. Yeah. This is from yeah, yeah. this stuff. Yeah. This is also this is all from Lewis. The carb clever stuff from Lewis. This this carb clever stuff from yeah. this this stuff. Yeah. 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 Rita. Yeah. It's easy to make. Yeah, very. So yeah. Rita, come around here that they can tell us how how, how do you make them? I need to tell you the recipe exactly. I don't have a recipe, so. I don't have the exact recipe. Just so people know what's in them. Yeah. So you basically take. A a mix. I take the, the mixed seed uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mix and I put psyllium husk with it, a mm -hmm. bit of salt, water, mix it and then you just give it a little moment so that the psyllium can work itself yeah. and then you pour it onto a, a, a tray okay. and you put it in, in the butter? oven. No butter. No butter. No. You put it in the oven at 150. I normally score them halfway through yeah. and I add rosemary oh, nice. on top and a bit of uh, coarse salt on top and then when it comes out of the oven they're easy to break yeah. into because you already scored yeah. them. If you don't do that they're very difficult to break. Yeah. But I like it with the, you can do anything, you can put garlic powder on yeah. it, you can you put paprika, paprika yeah. you can put a little bit of, uh, yeah. if you really want it, you can put uh, peri peri on top yeah. of it. Yeah. So you can, wait onion, onion powder, onion yeah. powder, yeah. they, they really, really easy to make. Yeah. But you have to put them in a low heat. Yeah. You can't put them on one heat and two hundred because they burn. They burn, yeah. yeah. And it takes about 45 minutes for them to cook. Okay, never, yeah. never done that. No. Very easy. Just make sure that when you put it on your, rather use tea trays, make sure that it's very thin. So I take it and I pat it down with my hands to make mm. sure that it's very thin, because otherwise they go quite rubbery. Okay. Yeah. Very easy to make. I don't even the kitchen know. Kitchen carbo is allowed to do this. Yeah. Always use your finger to taste. But then just wash your hands afterwards, yeah, please. I think. Have another half a lemon, mm, please. Yeah. Before you double dip, huh? Just a little yeah. bit more lemon. You can have a bit of dulce then, too, right? You can add a little bit of dulce. Yeah. Tarragon. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of chopped chives because I, oh, nice. I have yeah. them. Yeah. I'm going to add some chives to this. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
So Pete, why do you see if you look down the channel there? I'm just looking at consistency. There's no lumps. <laughs> no lumps or anything. Okay, so. Are you money Yes, I've got my oven. Where's my scraper? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. The, the blue scraper. Oh, thanks, mate. So this now is our smoked mackerel pate. Now this is the beauty of this. This is the kind of thing you can make in advance. For Christmas or? For Christmas or for, for any... Well, the week before Christmas. So people are asking if you can freeze this. Yeah, you can freeze it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. I've never tried freezing it, mine doesn't last it. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I was going to say that. The, the problem is, it, trust it, you, yeah. You have to make a, a, an enormous amount if you want some to freeze, because you'll see now, this disappears quite quickly. Yeah, And it literally is so easy to do. You just, it's those three ingredients, four ingredients, literally. And you just you just dip it with your um, yeah. There we go. Let's take that away. So this is how you serve it, just like that, with some some little crackers. You could look. You could embellish the cucumber. You could have some celery and some carrots and some bits and pieces. But let's um let's put this on a tray. So shall I take this out to the area? I think this, this, they're all salivating here watching, so let's give them something to eat. Okay. We can get stuck into that. Shall we call the waiter or must I do it? No, I think you can do that. Okay. So, excuse the bomb sight. Haven't yet got my assistant to learn how to, to, to clean up as I go, uh, but we will get to that another time. Okay. So that's basically that. We've got, let's have a look at our... Marta! I mean, these are looking the oh. business. The ones that are not close is Rita. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What was it with me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, these chicken ones are <laughs> Chicken yeah. ones are ready. Quickly as that. Yeah. Wow. Well the nice thing is make doing nice small ones is that so that so let's get this. This is a big industrial oven, so opening and closing it still stays at 200 degrees. It might, it might be a different story, and a domestic oven might take a little bit longer. So now I've just made a little... Fire mayonnaise. Fire mayonnaise. This has got a little bit of chipotle in, so let's circulate that. Now we're serving these straight out of the oven, but these would be just as nice cold. Yeah. These are really, these would be fabulous chill, you know, the next day. Again, you could make these in advance. These are great for a picnic. But these are nice for, for lunchbox for yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Well look, you know the, the thing we've always said about the snacks is this is obviously this is something we're talking oh, hold on, let's just let's get it all sexy and professional first. 
You know, we've said this is, um, there we go. Check that out. Waitress, thank you. So, you know, these are, these are ideal snacks for Christmas, but these are part of our normal snack offering, um, whereby these are things to take during the day. Yeah, yeah. Make these in advance, put two or three of each in a, in a, in a Tupperware container, take them to work, and, and if you're, you're hungry during meals, snack on these. Yeah, yeah. It's all green list. Mm. It's all stuff that can be done in advance. How they taste? We're not going to get these tasted now because we're going to put these with the steak. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's move these and let's have a look how our uh, truffles are doing. Mm -hmm. We've got some more chicken ones still to come. Yeah. And roasted garlic. And roasted garlic. Yeah. Okay, let's leave those in the fridge. So, so for those of you watching at home, so these have firmed up nicely. They've been in the fridge for about 20 minutes in the freezer. They've firmed up nicely. We're going to leave these in the freezer and we're going to eat these later. Okay, after dinner. good. Okay. That's our demonstration, folks. That's four snacks in a matter of minutes. Of course, so much faster when you've got your trusty assistant, Steph. Um, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's really a. It's really a pleasure um, to be your top chef. What you? Sous chef. Sous yeah. chef. Sous chef. Sous chef. Sous chef. Okay. So I don't know what about the rest of the formalities, but I know we're going to sit down and have some dinner. I don't know what happens live from here on inwards, but okay. we're going to sit down and have a little steak, some bernays, some little um, Brussels sprout bombs, and a little salad with some blue cheese dressing. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So thank you, thank you for um, for everybody watching uh, us live on on YouTube. All the Fire family. It's really great to have you join us here in Chef Pete's workshop. Thank you for everybody here that's celebrating the past year with us and also the launch of our recipe book. So from our home to your home. <laughs> I wish you a wonderful, wonderful December where you are in control and where you celebrate, have a lot of fun and remember to fix insulin resistance easily. You just have to... Fire. It stick to the green list. Stick to the green list. <laughs> Good. That's 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 okay. So, the green list. see you soon. Cheers guys. Bye -bye. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.